Okay, I'm going to do a few examples here using this Casio uh, FX115 calculator. Uh, this is the Casio FX115, actually ES plus emulator. Uh, you can get this calculator, uh, one that you can hold at Walmart for about uh, less than $20 somewhere around fifteen to twenty dollars and you get it at most college bookstores for about twenty five dollars but it's a really powerful great calculator for that amount of money and it shows things naturally I'll show you what I mean right off the bat so here's the first problem evaluate the absolute value of this expression right here negative two x minus y over three x cubed minus two y squared when x equals negative two and y equals negative three so especially for placement tests that you're allowed to use a calculator this is a nice calculator to use and it's not even a graphing calculator so uh, absolute value is down here in uh, the uh, sort of yellowish color so to get that you hit the shift button to get anything that's in red you have to hit the alpha button first so to get this abs for absolute value i'll hit shift then abs for absolute value now i see that it's a fraction type of thing so i can hit the fraction key and it breaks it up into a fraction. So on the top I type in negative 2, right here is the negative button, this is a subtraction button, so negative 2, now what is x? x is negative 2, so I'll put that in parentheses, times, that means times, uh, negative 2, that's what I'm substituting in there for the x, and then minus, right here, minus, substituting in for y is negative 3, so I'll put that in parentheses, anything I substitute in I put in parentheses, and then down at the bottom, just arrow down to the bottom, I have 3x cubed, so that's 3, the x is negative 2, so parentheses, negative 2, and that gets cubed. Now how do I do cubes and so on? Well this is where I do square root here. So what's the 2? Third power. Let's get out of the exponent area, so I use the right arrow to get out of the exponent area, and continuing on, minus 2, then the y is negative 3, put that in parentheses, negative 3, close parentheses, and that got squared. So I could use this button or just hit this and that will say squared. It's all in the absolute value, so uh, I have it all there and I get 1 6. So the answer to that problem is 1 6. 1 6. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next problem says to um, simplify this square root right here. So square root is right here, square root. So I hit square root and now it's a fraction. So hit the fraction key and put in your numerator and denominator. So 27 arrow down 8. So 27 eighths hit equals and you get 3 square roots of 6 over 4. And that would be the exact answer to that problem. If you want to switch it to a decimal, hit this button right here and it'll switch it to a decimal. Okay, let's go to the next problem, log base 2 of 8. Most calculators cannot do this, log base 2 of 8, but you have a log anything button on the calculator. So let's clear that out and go log, hit that button right here. The base is 2, with an arrow to the right of 8. And what do we get? 3. So that's the answer to that problem. This one here, what is the log of a 100? Well, log when you don't see the base means base 10, but you have a log button on this as well, right here. Log of 100, close the parentheses, and you get 2. What is the natural log of 5? Here is the natural log button right here. Okay, so all your log buttons are right here. Natural log means base E. So natural log of 5 is right there. Okay, this one, E squared. How do you get, you get to the E button? The E is above the natural log button. Natural log means base E, so the E button is right above it. So that's in yellow, so hit shift, natural log. Now you got E raised to the, this is nice that it shows it in the proper format that this is up here as an exponent. We want that exponent to be 2. It equals, and there you go. All right, now for solving a linear equation like this right here, you can do that on these uh, calculators uh, and I'll go ahead and show you how. So I notice that it's a fraction right off the bat. Let's say I didn't even notice that. Let's say I just started typing X. Well where do, can you get to X? And you do have to use the X key to do this. X is in red right here above the parentheses. So to get to the red buttons hit the alpha key. There's X. Now hit the fraction key right here and now we can type in the denominator. We could have done that ahead of time. That denominator is 2. 
arrow over so we're not typing in the bottom here. See, if I type in minus, I'd be subtracting off the bottom. I don't want to do that, so let's delete that out. Arrow to the right and say subtract. Now I got another fraction of one third. One third. Now arrow to the right. Now I need to say equals. Well, notice right up here in red is the equal sign. So do alpha equals, and then it's 5x, five, 5 alpha x plus 4. Now, what you do at this point is we want to solve this. So click, see it's in here in yellow. So click Shift, then Solve. And now this is not your answer yet. No matter what number is here, that's not your answer until you hit equals. Now hit equals, and that's my answer right here. Negative 0.9629 yada 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 is the answer to that problem. Now that's a decimal answer, and I don't think I can switch it over to a fraction but that is the decimal answer to this problem. And um, that's how you can solve linear equations. Now, if you have a higher powered equation, like a uh, quadratic here, then you can do that on the calculator by using a menu. So you go to this mode button here, and you choose equations. Right now we're in choice one, just computing things. Okay, So we can go back to that anytime we need to. But we're going to switch it over to equations, choice 5. And quadratic equations are right here, choice 3. Now, the quadratic equation has to be set equal to 0. So, therefore, on this equation, I have to subtract the 4 and move it to the other side to get this right there. So there's the equation set equal to 0. I just subtracted 4 from both sides. So now typing in my coefficients, they are 6. See, the a is the number before the x squared. Then we have negative 23. So negative 23. You hit equals after each one of these. And then the negative 4. All those are in there. Hit equals. Now hit equals again, and it will solve it. One of your answers is 4, and the other answer is negative one six. So that's the two answers to this quadratic. If you hit the equals again, it will tell you what the x value of the minimum or maximum point is. So that's 23 twelfths. And you can click the S to D button to switch it to a uh, decimal. See, like that. And hit it again, and it will give you the y value of the minimum. There it is as a decimal. Hit the S to D button, and it gives you that as a uh, decimal. Okay, that's how you solve quadratics. What about if you had to factor the quadratic, this right here? Well, let's solve it one more time. It's the exact equation I have right here, but it's not an equation. We're just supposed to factor it. When I hit equals on this, I get a solution of x equals 4. Let me write that down here. I get x equals 4. Well, a factor is where everything's on one side here. And um, so what we have to do is actually subtract the 4. So the factor for this one would be x minus 4. Now, what's the other factor? Well, let's check it out here. The other solution is negative 1, 6. So I'll say x equals, x equals negative um, 1, 6. Now, what you need to do here is multiply by the 6. So that gives you 6x equals negative 1. See, so multiply by the 6 to get rid of the fraction. And then add 1 to both sides and you get 6x plus 1 and that's the other factor so you can get factors from your solutions this one's really easy just subtract it over like if this would have been x equals negative 4 the factor would have been x plus 4 this one is x equals negative 1 6 so we have to multiply by the 6 and then add 1 for example if we would have got a solution like x equals 2 sevenths let's say then uh, if that's the solution the factor would be I'd have to multiply by the 7 to get 7x, and then I'd have to subtract the 2 to get minus 2. So you multiply by the 7 and subtract the 2. Multiply by the 6 and add the 1. But that's how you get your factors. Okay, uh, there's also a uh, systems of equation area on this. So if I uh, go to the uh, menu again and go to equations, choice 5, Systems of equations with two equations, two unknowns, are right here for choice one. So I'll go to that. And they have to be set up in this format where x's and y's equals a number. So you just put in your coefficients of 2, 3, and 10. 
with the problem I'm doing here. And then your next line is negative 3. So negative 3, uh, negative 5 from right here, and negative 16. And then hit equals after you get all the men, and you get your x answer of 2 and your y answer of 2. So that's your answer to those problems, 2 and 2. Now, this system of equations, uh, that is not a linear system of equations, but you can solve it on the solver by doing this. If y equals 5e to the 0.1x and y also equals 2e to the 0.5x, then you can set these two things equal to each other. So I'll solve it in the solver. So let me go to the mode menu, go back to 1 for computation, and type 5e, 5, um, right here's your e button, shift e raised to the what? 0.1x, 0.1 alpha x, let's arrow forward so we can get the equal sign right here in red, equals, now type in the other side, 2 uh, shift e to the 0.5x, so we got it all typed in, and now hit solve, shift solve, that is not my answer, that's the answer from the last equation. Hit equals, and there's your answer, 2.29. Okay, complex numbers. Okay, if I would go right now and type in the square root of negative 4, it can't do it. It just says math error. In other words, there's no real solution. But there's an imaginary solution. The way you get to that is hit the mode button. That's it all clear to get out of here. Hit the mode button and go to 2 for complex. And now to get the square root of negative 4, just hit square root of negative 4 like we did before. Hit equals, and it's 2i. By the way, in the, if the answer is imaginary, it will tell you the imaginary solution. To simplify something like this, you can just type in parentheses, as long as you're in the uh, complex area. 2 plus 3i, right here is your i button. I think it's in uh, uh, yellow, it looks like, so shift I, yep, close parentheses, and again that I will only work if you're in the complex mode, parentheses 4 minus 5I, shift I right there, close parentheses, and what do we get right here, 23 plus 2I. So that's some of the things that this calculator will do and it will help you on placement tests and so on. Uh, Here's even a place that you can do uh, improper fractions. Like if you have a problem, let's go to uh, the regular compute computing area. If I needed to put in a mixed number like this, like 2 and 1 third, I can do that. And in fact, when I hit equals, it shows up as a decimal. If I can, I'm sorry, as a fraction, hit the button right here, the S to D button, and it shows it up as a repeating decimal, 2.3 repeating. Hit it again, it shows a lot of digits. By the way, you can input uh, repeating decimals using this key right here. If we hit alpha that, then we can say something like 0.7. Oop, sorry, let's clear it and type in. We got it, let's say we want to do 0, 0.0, but the 7 repeats. So now hit the alpha repeating decimal. And the 7th, there it is, 0 0.07 repeating. So 0 0.7, 0 0.07 repeating is the same as, same as 7 90ths. And here it is as a repeating decimal. And here it is showing a lot of decimal points out. So I think that's about everything. All your trig functions are in there if you need them. Sine, cosine, tangent, inverse sine, inverse, uh, cosine, inverse tangent. Um, uh, Higher roots are right here, like cube roots and so on. Uh, any root is right here. Like, for example, if you had to take the, uh, let's say, the cube root of 8, there you go, is 2. So hopefully that will show you all the basics you need from this calculator.